What to expect in Twins 40-man roster moves this offseason. It's all coming up on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Tuesday, November 8th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Again, this is Nash Walker hosting this podcast for three seasons, writing about the Twins at twinsdaily.com for four seasons, and we're going over the 40-man roster today, the current spots, who needs to be added to the 40 this summer from the prospect group, we'll explain what that means on this show as well and what that means for the Twins offseason. Most importantly, who they're adding, who do they have to cut, how does the 40-man roster shuffle this offseason is what we're going under. So at MLB.com, this is how they describe it. Players signed at age 18 or younger need to be added to their club's 40-man roster within five seasons or they become eligible for the Rural 5 draft. 18 or younger within five seasons in the minor leagues need to be added to the 40-man roster. 19 or older need to be protected within four seasons in the minor. So 18 or younger, five. 19 or older, four seasons. And what that is is trying to do is prevent teams from prospect hoarding. Because if if guys don't have to be added to the 40-man, you just load your minor league system with talent. These guys will never make it. They won't get opportunities outside of the organization. By opening it up and forcing teams to add players to the 40-man, because those spots are so precious, if if they don't add somebody, they are eligible to be drafted by another club, and that team has to put that player on their 40-man and on their 26-man roster for the next season. So it's there's high stakes drafting somebody in the Rule 5 draft, but it allows teams to not hoard prospects and allows teams to give players a legitimate chance to give players a a second chance or a third chance to make teams. If it's the Dodgers who have a loaded 40 man roster, a loaded 26 man roster, you know, Joe Schmo might never make it to the Dodgers, but he might make it to the Pittsburgh pirates. And you want to give him that opportunity. And you want to give the pirates the opportunity to get Joe Schmo and improve their club as well. So this off season, the twins have some, they have some prominent names, who are Rule 5 eligible and need to be added to the 40-man roster. If not, they are unprotected, and any team can select them in the draft and just pluck them straight from the organization. It happened with Akil Badu. It happened with Johan Santana, which is amazing. But it happened with Akil Badu. Uh, It happened with Tyler Wells. It happened with a handful of other guys. It's happened a lot to the Twins. It's happened a lot to a lot of clubs because there's so much talent, and there's so much talent in baseball. I want to... You know how many players have debuted in Major League Baseball history? It is wild to me. I always think this is crazy. There have only been 22,860 Major League players. Think of Target Field when it's full, like 40,000. 22,860 Major League players total in the history of the game. That's how hard it is to make it. And that's why things like this, you know, the 40-man roster, the Rule 5 uh, rules, why those are created to try to spur that competition a little bit and give guys opportunities. So the twins this off season, some prominent names, 40 man locks guys who will absolutely be added to the 40 man unless they're traded. Spencer steer was one of them and they traded steer. And that might've been part of the calculus there because you do have to cut guys off the 40 man. Anytime you add somebody, Edward Julian is going to be added. And he had just another tremendous season. Double a was, was great for the surge, you know, middle of the order, bad drew walks hit for power. He was especially good over the last couple of months, MLB pipeline. And I think baseball America even as well. I don't want to lump them in if it's not true, but MLB pipeline has Edward Julian 14th best in the system. I believe right now, which he would probably be the best 14th best prospect in the history of baseball. In my mind, I think he's so underrated. I think he's so much better than the 14th best prospect in the system. I would put him in the 5 to 10 range. I would honestly be tempted to put him in the 1 to 5 range because all he's done is hit since the Twins drafted him out of Auburn in the Cape, in the Twins organization, now at Double A. He's doing everything you're looking for. There's swing and miss, definite swing and miss and defensive questions, a little bit like Matt Walner. 
but he can hit and he can hit for power. He can draw walks. He's going to get on base. He's hit for a high average in the minors. The twins will add him to the 40 man roster. Right now, there's 37 guys on the 40 man. The 60 day injured list players are added directly back on to the 40 man. So right now, there's 37 on the 40 man roster. Edward Julian, Junior Severino, Michael Hellman, Miziel Urbina, Cody Lorison, Matt Cantorino, Cody Funderburk, and Sean Mooney. They all need to be added to the 40 man roster or else they could be drafted in the Rule 5 draft. Honestly, like Cody Lorison had a great year. So to me, he's probably a keep. But the the two that that are prominent are Julian and Matt Cantorino. The Twins will absolutely protect both of them. Junior Severino had a really nice year at the plate as well. And Cedar Rapids moved up. He was very, very good at both levels, Cedar Rapids and Wichita. I think he's probably a save. Uh, Michael Hellman is probably a save. You know, he he hits left-handed pitching really well. We had Michael on the show. He excelled for the Saints and could be major league depth for the Twins. I think he's probably a save. Cody Funderburk had a, a wonderful year. We had Cody on as well to the show before the season. Great year pitching. Uh, sub three ERA, really, really nice year for Cody Funderburg. And then Sean Mooney has big time stuff, big time strikeout numbers. Uh, walk numbers are high, but he's one of those like volatility pitchers you would hate to lose and then break out somewhere else. So there's some tough decisions. Miziel Urbina too is finally, you know, finally is one of those uh, helium prospects. I think a little bit this year, finally put it together at the plate and had a really nice season in the lower minors. And he was one of their international signings, you know, higher upside players. He had a really nice year. I don't think they want to lose him. A lot of decisions to make here. You know, Julian Severino, Hellman, Urbina, Lorison, Cantorino, Funderburk, Mooney, all of them. I think I would not be surprised if the Twins saved any of them. I would be shocked if they didn't if they didn't uh, keep Julian and Cantorino. They will. But that uh, that's a long list of names. So who could the Twins cut off the 40-man roster this offseason? Coming to you after this word. From Bet Online. Thank you, Bet Online, for sponsoring today's episode. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football this season. Sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Again, BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. That's BetOnline.net. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Who could be cut off the 40-man this offseason? Because that's just as important. The Twins are going to make additions in free agency. They're going to have to cut. They're absolutely going to have to cut off the 40-man. They've already done some, some housekeeping. You know, the, the decline options, Sano, uh, Dylan Bundy, Chris Archer, they've already been removed from the 40-man roster. Who could be cut? Emilio Pagan could be non-tendered and, and would be off the 40-man roster at that point absolutely a possibility. I would bet that he will not be on the Twins 40-man roster. He might be on somebody else's 40-man roster, but I would bet against him being on the Twins 40-man roster. That's an easy one, an easy possibility. Trevor McGill could be a DFA, and what DFA is is designate for assignment. It matters. DFA matters when you have somebody and you DFA them off the 40-man, what has to happen is they must go through the waiver process first before they can go back into your organization. And if somebody's out of options, you get three option years, meaning you know Nick Gordon is an example. The Twins have optioned Nick Gordon to the majors and minors and optioned him at least three years, so he is out of options to the minor leagues. If the Twins wanted to get Nick Gordon off the 26-man roster, they would have to... DFA him and get him off the 40 man roster and you sacrifice another team picking him up on waivers. If they were to DFA Trevor McGill, there's a chance he comes back and you have him off the 40 man and in the system like pitching for the saints, but there's a better chance that someone will pick him up. He was decent. The stuff is there. I bet someone would pick him up on waivers. The twins did last year. They picked him up on waivers last year, but there's a possibility he clears waivers and he accepts his, his outright to St. Paul. And I don't think that's going to happen 
But I think if the Twins were to DFA Trevor McGill, which I think is, it's it's likely he's going to be picked up by another team. And usually there's that they're churning, and then another team says, "Oh, we need a forty man roster spot. We better DFA Trevor McGill as well." It's this constant this constant turnover. Once you're on the forty man roster, though, if you're going to be off the forty man roster, you got to go through waivers. Once a team adds you to the forty man. You have to go through waivers before you can be outrighted off the roster. So it's a big deal to add guys to the 40-man. Cole Sands is on the 40-man roster. He has options left. So the Twins can move him to St. Paul. But if they wanted his 40-man spot, they would have to DFA him and he'd have to go through waivers before coming back to the Twins. Again, I think another team would pick up Cole Sands on waivers. There's enough there to like, you know, the, the Pirates or the Diamondbacks or somebody might see something they like and pick up Cole Sands to pitch for them. Uh, in 2023, he's a candidate. I mean, I, I don't think it's likely, but he's a candidate. Kyle Garlic is a DFA candidate. Absolutely. He does have an option left though, which is valuable. It's valuable to have options left because if you don't have options and you're a fringe, you know, 26 man roster guy, a fringe twin, like Kyle Garlic, I would say is going into 2023. If you don't have options left, it's easy. You have to be outrighted. You know, you just have to be if they need your spot on the 26 man. And that's not even the 40. Like if they need your spot on the twins, you have to be outrighted. And in that case, there's no more options. So you got to go through waivers. And that's the case. Uh, Cal, not for Kyle Garlic. He has options left. And then Mark Contreras uh, as well, but of course has options. So they, the twins can can option Contreras to AAA without DFAing him. But we're talking 40 man roster spots to get guys off the 40. You expose them to waivers. And I think the Twins' main candidates to be outrighted off the 40, Emilio Pagan, Trevor McGill, Cole Sands, Cal Garlic, Mark Contreras, in no particular order other than Pagan being the clear one. And I think McGill is a, a clear second. But Garlic, Contreras, I think Contreras especially, maybe the Twins like what they saw. And maybe, you know, they they trust even that he'll he'll clear waivers. That's that's usually the bigger part of the calculus. Usually a team won't DFA or will DFA someone if they believe that player will safely get through waivers and come back to the organization. They they won't they will DFA them to clear the roster spot in hopes that the player will come back and won't be claimed. Via trade, there will be trades off the 40 man roster, but the question you have to ask yourself is who's coming back in that trade? Is it a prospect who's not on the 40 who doesn't need to be added? Is it a major league player who does need to be added? Is it a prospect that's on the 40 that needs to be added? Those are the questions you have to ask. But the two clear trade candidates this offseason will continue to talk about them. Max Kepler and Gio Urshela are both trade candidates. That's your 40-man roster look in a in a blink of an eye. There's your there's your 40-man roster look. So the twins need to add Julian, Severino, Hellman, Urbina, Lorison, Cantorino, Funderburk, and Mooney, unless they don't, and those players are uh, subject to the Rule 5 draft and could be picked away by another organization a la Akil Badu, a la Johan Santana, a la Tyler Wells, and a million others. Twins can cut or non-tender Emilio Pagan. They can DFA Trevor McGill. They can DFA Cal Garlic. They can DFA Mark Contreras. They can DFA Cole Sands. Those are the clear ones to me. Uh, maybe some under-the-radar candidates, Blaine Enlow, who's coming off Tommy John surgery, pitch okay coming back, you know, more of a, an upside arm before the surgery, but never put together the the numbers in the minors, came back very quickly from Tommy John. He is a candidate, I think, absolutely, maybe even above Cole Sands. Ronnie Henriquez, they added, he looked really good. I thought Ronnie looked good, and I think he is uh, depth. I think he's depth, AAA depth for 2023. But yeah, Pagan sticks out, uh, you know, Cody Stashak, who had a shoulder had big time shoulder surgery. I think it was labrum. I want to say labrum surgery or rotator cuff surgery. Uh, he's going to be out, and I think he's he's a DFA candidate as well uh, to clear a forty man spot. So those are the clear candidates to me. Usually pitchers is where you go. There's usually less position players just because there's so many so many pitchers on this team, like so many pitchers on this roster. But roster spots are skimpy, like they are hard to find and teams will get aggressive to make roster spots, especially in off seasons where they have to add a bunch of prospects to the 40 man. Think about it this way. If the twins still had Spencer steer right now, they have 37 on their 40 man roster. If they still had Spencer steer, they would definitely have to add Julian Cantorino and steer to the 40 man. There's 40. 
you know, you non-tender Pagan, you DFA McGill, maybe you DFA Contreras, that's 37. And you can make three additions without an extra move in free agency or via trade. That's how tight it gets. And that extra spot is so valuable. And I think it does push teams to make trades. And that's why sometimes you see trades before the deadline because teams are like, we can't, we can't protect all these guys because we're going to lose too much talent. We're going to have to outright guys. We're going to have to DFA guys. We're going to lose them. We're going to lose them on the waiver wire. And we don't want that. You'll see trades before the deadline to protect players from the rule five draft because these, these orgs don't want to lose that much talent in one night, (laughs) in one day. It's, it's always interesting to me. I know sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's minutia. Like it's not, it's not something we follow on a daily basis, but when it happens, you realize how tight these rosters are. And for a team like the twins that, that needs to make quality additions this off season, every one of those spots is valuable. And every single one of those decisions can come around to bite you. And sometimes there are really, really surprising DFA decisions. It's Jordan Balazovic or Ronnie Enriquez would be surprising. Sometimes there are really surprising moves teams will make just to create that one roster spot for Edward Julian, for Matt Cantorino, for anybody. And that's, I think it's a good thing for the league. It's a definitely a good thing for players, but I think it's a good thing for the league because it's, um, it creates activity. I think it creates more activity. We just aren't as aware of it because no team is saying, oh, well, we had six guys eligible and we needed to trade four off the roster. So we made this trade. Teams aren't going to say that out loud, but I think it does create activity in trade. It creates roster activity, which is very exciting, I think, in an offseason. There's no 40-man crunch, I would say, for the Twins. They're in a fine spot, especially that they traded Spencer Steer. They're in a fine spot. They're going to add Cantorino and Julian. That's 39. I think they're going to cut Pagan. That's 38. McGill's a cut. That's 37. Uh, Garlic and Contreras are probably both DFAs. That's 35. You make your additions in the offseason. Maybe you trade Kepler. You trade Urshela. And you find your way back up to 40 with some waiver claims. That's what I expect to happen this offseason. They'll create room. They'll have room. It's always something that we pay attention to when moves are happening. Like we'll see on Twitter, Dustin Morse will tweet and say, Twins 40 man now at 38. Twins 40 man now at 39. And everybody's like, oh, well, they got to make room. They can make room and they will make room and they will make room this offseason. There will be cuts. This is why underperforming major leaguers or even prospects hurts an org on the 40 man. Like that hurts to have somebody you can't rely on either for health reasons or performance reasons on the 40 man, because that spot could be given to somebody else. That spot could be given to Ms. Albina or Junior Severino or Cody Funderburk or any of these prospects who played really well in 2022. Those spots are valuable. So you got to be, you know, a roster spot is valuable and you have to, you got to do your job and the twins have to rely on some guys to stay healthy and, and need them to stay healthy. And Derek Falvey was on the hot stove today. And uh, I think it was the hot stove on MLB network. And I was watching, he said, we got to be healthier. That was the quote I took. We got to be healthier. Derek, you're right. Got to be healthier in 2023 uh, or else things are, are not going to be pretty for the twins. There's going to be shuffling here on the 40 man. There's going to be shuffling on the 26 man roster You're going to see ads. You're going to see trades. You're going to see additions. You're going to see subtractions. There's a lot coming, I think, for the Twins this offseason. This is not a – I don't think this is a regime in the last couple of years that that stands pat. I think this is a regime that is willing to shake things up and make additions and try to make splashes even in free agency and trade. Like, I'm getting tweets back. People are saying, the Twins never do anything. They never do anything. I'm like – the Twins just signed Carlos Correa and traded for Sonny Gray and tried to make moves at the deadline to improve. I thought it was a good deadline at the time. Like, I'm not afraid to admit that. They're, they tried this last year, but I'm not I'm not saying that they did a good job of building before that. If they built better before that, they wouldn't have had to try so hard, I, I don't think. Or if they did, you know, they did try so hard and they added Correa and Gray, the team would have been a lot better, I think. And it would have been better with better health, but it would have been even better with with more planning prior to the off season where you're not just coming into the off season with Joe Ryan and Bailey Ober and the desire to compete in 2022 need better. There will be decisions. There will be tough decisions. There will be decisions that we evaluate for a long time. 
this offseason, not just in trades, not just in free agency, but these little things like the 40 man, who do they add? Who do they not? Who gets drafted? Who gets DFA? Who gets non-tendered? All of those things I will have for you on this show on Lockdown Twins. I want to thank you so much. We had such a great season at Lockdown Twins. The show grew 166% this year. Lockdown Twins, 166%. That's because of you. And I'm so grateful you're here now in kind of the down point. I know that uh, the hope is low for the Twins. We're going to be here and we're going to push for some moves this offseason. Thank you for making Lockdown Twins your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. Drop any questions, comments, concerns, anything you got for me in the comment section. You can tweet me. You can DM me. Whatever you want to do, let it rip. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Go Twins.